Rodgers, who, let's be frank, he went from the penthouse, Green Bay, last 30 years, nobody does offense as consistently as Green Bay, regardless of the quarterback, Jordan Love, Aaron Favre, to the Jets. Rex Ryan, Todd Bowles, Adam Gase, Robert Sala, offense is a, a you know, Bermuda Triangle. And you, you see glimpses of it, it disappears, right? Like it, it doesn't exist regardless of the coach. That's what the Jets are. That's precisely what the Jets are. They were third in the NFL in attendance last year and pathetic. 78,000 fans. That's what the Jets average. That's top of the league. That's like top three. And they haven't made the playoffs in 13 years. And, 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 and they haven't been interesting offensively in longer than that. That's what the Jets are. They have low standards. They sell out the stadium and the team's pathetic. I mean, being a, I used to work with a guy, Greeny. His whole shtick was, why do I put myself through this? That's a Jet fan. We have Jet fans in the building here. Why do I put myself through this? Good question. They don't in L.A. They just don't go to the games. I mean, the Jets fans are, are the, 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 they're, they're at the bottom and they keep on digging. 78,000 fans every Sunday. And they're, forget losing, no playoffs 13 years. They're not interesting. Who's been worse offensively for 13 years consistently than the Jets? I'm, I'm honestly, I'm scratching my head. Bears? I don't know. So, I mean, eight straight season, a packed stadium to watch a below 500 team. They're not even competitive. They're below 500 and can't score. I respect the Lions or the Falcon fans or the Raider fans. It said enough is enough. They don't embrace pathetic. And we got to be honest about this. When Brady left New England, I got it. Wow. Belichick was increasingly rigid. They couldn't draft skill players, and he had accomplished. I mean, he had a trophy case of, you know, stacked with Super Bowl trophies. When Matt Stafford left the Lions, bad ownership, uh, average coaches, wonky roster. I got it. You know, Russell Wilson, by the way, didn't want to leave Seattle. Pete wanted him out. I got that. But leaving Green Bay, like when's the last time they had a bad offensive line (laughs) or a bad receiving core or chaos in the front office? Like, it's the gold standard of small market American, North American pro franchises. The New York team stink in the NFL. They don't in Green Bay. Well, they got rid of it. No, they didn't. Aaron got rid of himself. He got weird and darkness retreat and uh, finicky yeah. and precious. And they just stayed with him one more year. They didn't know what Jordan Love was. So it, it, there's, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Stafford upgraded. Brady skill players and control upgraded. Russell Wilson didn't want to leave. Kirk Cousins with that old line in Atlanta, you could argue. And those skill players, that's a pretty good fit. This isn't a good, this is going backwards. But, but the idea that he went to a franchise with high standards, the shtick, Jet fans, their shtick is, why do I put myself through this? You don't have to. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling a little dizzy here. Not going to lie. New York Jets fans do not have low standards. Because they support their team and watch all those games and go to those games, even when they're not good, means that they have low standards. I mean, it's just it's just not true. It's just not true. They're just incredibly passionate about their team and about football. And it's New York, and you're you're getting people from New York, um, Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, Delaware. You know, you're Washington. You're you're pulling from kind of all over, all massive major areas. And going to the Jets games, I've been to many Jets games actually, because um, uh, my uncle is um, was a season ticket holder for the New York Jets. And so I went to a lot of I've been I've been to a lot of games because the guy who we had tickets with would often not be able to go and so then I would be able to go so I had been going to Jets games since I was like honestly like I think like six years old uh pretty young um and it's an event man it's a party the tailgating is really amazing like it the tailgates there are just extraordinary right like it is an it is just it's an event it is an experience it's fun it's awesome it's joyous but it doesn't mean that they have low expectations it doesn't mean that they're okay with the Jets not winning or being competitive. Like, that is not fair. I, I mean, I, I just don't think that's fair at all. Um, but, yeah, when it's, you know, a Sunday at 1 o'clock 
and it's like 35, 40 degrees out and cold, it's pretty fun to go sit in a parking lot, tailgate, eat delicious food, burgers, drinks, chips, soda, everything, and then go watch football with an intense, passionate crowd. Like, that's just, that's fun. That's a great experience. So whether they're winning or losing, you still want to show up. You still want to show up. Because it's just fun, because it's that connected. And it's and it is, it's a community. Most teams are like a community, right? No matter what team you go to, it's a community. But you can tell it's passionate. And you can tell New York being such a uh, long-standing franchise, it runs deep. And you definitely feel like you can, you know, you're part of something. Um, cause I think that's also, cause not, I don't know if you guys all know this. Um, not all places have the same, not all teams have the same tailgate culture. Um, historically, for instance, the Philadelphia Eagles, you couldn't tailgate before games. It wasn't until I think they got Lincoln financial field. So at the vet, you couldn't tailgate. I don't know if it's because you couldn't drink, um, in the parking lot. I, I forget exactly what it was. I don't really know. Um, uh, I'd, I'd have to ask, um, uh, my dad would know actually. Um, but what that what that was and so they didn't they didn't have tailgates there you know it wasn't really like a thing and that's philly massive incredibly passionate about you know uh their team as well um and so the you know the new york jets have one of like the top tailgates like in the nfl so yeah man it's it's an experience and it's and it's awesome i mean it, it really really is um and so to just to kind of bash them as saying that they just they don't have standards just because um, or they have low standards just because they, they show up. I, I just think that's that just doesn't really make sense. It really doesn't. Um, but in terms of Aaron Rodgers making a mistake. Can we please get over. The darkness retreat, my God. I, why is it so bizarre that he goes on a retreat and does something like that that's going to truly help him become a better person and grow as a human being and grow as a football player? But like, if he wanted to go take a vacation to Putacana, that's totally okay. If he wanted to go to Putacana and, and go hook up with a bunch of random people and, and go party and stuff like that, that would be totally okay. But the fact that he's trying to do stuff to look within and grow as a person... That's like somehow just something that we want to keep making fun of him for. It's just it's, at this point, it's getting old. I have a lot of uh, videos defending that, unpacking his spiritual journey more deeply. I'm not going to do it here, um, but it's just like g give it a rest, man. Give it a rest. Uh, lots of people want new challenges. And quite frankly, Tom Brady, Outside of that one year when they obviously won the Super Bowl, which was extraordinary and absolutely positively extraordinary. That's not act like what Tom Brady did there was just this massive, endless success. You know, because that's just not the case. It's really not. You know, one of his playoff games wins was was against Jalen Hurts as, uh, you know, his first year starter. And they didn't know what was going on there. You know, that was an absolute blowout. And then they got blown out by the Dallas Cowboys. Think about how low the Dallas Cowboys are. Who Colin has ripped? Well, Tom Brady's last game was getting destroyed by the Dallas Cowboys. Not exactly great. So again, he won a Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely, I'm not taking anything away from that. But like most Super Bowls, a lot of things had to have fallen in their favor to have that win. What happens if Patrick Mahomes had an offensive line? Maybe they don't win that Super Bowl. Now, it's not hard to imagine if they had a better offensive line. Is it really that hard to imagine that Patrick Mahomes would have, would have been able to be a difference maker and win in a Super Bowl? I mean, I don't think that's a far stretch. And then Tom Brady has no Super Bowls. And then do we consider Tampa Bay successful? Do we consider Tom Brady's move to Tampa successful? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, things got there was turbulence there with his coach, um, A.B., I mean, what are we talking about? He'd be ripping off his jersey, cursing off Tom Brady, talking about his wife, ex-wife, all that type of stuff. Like, wait, what? Things got real weird. A, a head coach who, I guess, was promoted to the front office, but, like, technically fired. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like lots of things went wrong in Tampa. Let's not act like it was all just, you know, peaches and cream. But again, I understand that he did get the Super Bowl. So at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I do get that. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers got injured. 
if Tom Brady got injured his first year when he got Gronk and AB and all that, he probably would have not won a Super Bowl. How do we know that? Because he didn't win any other Super Bowls after that year. So we kind of got robbed of what potentially Aaron Rodgers could have done because that first year may have been his best year. Potentially. We don't know. We're going to find out. But I just I just don't think it's fair. I really, really don't to just act like, you know, Aaron Rodgers made this big, massive mistake. Um, Because I know Aaron, because uh, I even know Colin has called out Green Bay in the past and called out that it's problem that they don't really have an owner and so they're not able to really like get some of the players that they need like it can just be tricky now he's kind of gone full circle and sees green bay as like this unbelievable amazing perfect franchise that can do no harm can do no wrong and i love green bay so i'm not bashing Green Bay. i love green bay i think they're doing great i think what they are doing is great and i think they are potentially building a dynasty uh with jordan love and matt lafleur and company out there so I, I'm, this isn't meant to knock Green Bay either. But sometimes it could be the right move for him to leave. Um, you know, could he have been a better quarterback with Green Bay in terms of a leader and a person there? Sure. You know, I'm not going to act like Aaron Rodgers probably isn't pretty difficult to get along with in terms of the front office, at least, you know, and, and even coaching staff. We do know the players love him. That is, that is like undeniable. Absolutely undeniable. And I think... Sometimes someone like an Aaron Rodgers wants, wants a change. He's had his whole career in Green Bay. And he did not have the success that Tom Brady had with Bill Belichick and the Patriots. And that was not necessarily because of Aaron Rodgers' fault. Some of that is because of what Green Bay was doing for Aaron. Are, are we going to act like Mike McCarthy is this, like this world-class coach? Because it's just not true. It's just not true. And even now giving him Matt LaFleur, who I think is a great coach, but still had to go through growing pains with Aaron Rodgers. That's a lot to ask of a, of a seasoned veteran Hall of Fame quarterback in that moment. I'm not so sure that Tom Brady would want that. I don't think that at all. So I just, I just don't think it's completely fair. I, I don't think that the Green Bay Packers did everything perfect to support Aaron Rodgers. They had suspect defenses for years. While it was a very defensively driven league, Tom Brady got to have the GOAT coach with the GOAT defenses. You don't think that ha that helped Tom Brady? I mean, of course it did. I mean, think of all the names that we can say that Tom Brady had. Whether it's Bill Belichick, whether it's Gronk, right? I mean, we, we can go down the list. I'm not going to go down them all right now. He's played with some big names. Big names. Aaron Rodgers has played with some names, but we can just we can just keep going for Tom Brady. Both offense, defensive, and coaching staff. We can't say that at all. At all for Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay Packers. And that's on Green Bay. That's not on Aaron. So I just don't think it's entirely fair. I really don't. And him going to New York was they for the longest time or i shouldn't say the longest time but for a stretch are a quarterback away considering what they've been able to do with the quarterback situation that they have it's pretty remarkable <laughs> so it's not hard to imagine that if you put aaron Rodgers in there they would be significantly better he got injured can we stop beating the guy down because he tore his achilles it just is an unfortunate situation that happened did the Golden State Warriors mismanage Kevin Durant, which led to his torn Achilles? I don't think so. I mean, maybe they 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 pressured him to go out there, but it was his decision ultimately. His decision that he's talking to the doctors. You can't always just blame the individual player. You have to figure out when to blame the individual player, when to blame the franchise when to blame, you know, like, yeah, you have to kind of dice it up. It's not just always one or the other. And if you can't understand that also, that sometimes when a player does make a decision, maybe it's not always the best decision, but then it still works out for them and they get lucky. AB worked for a minute. And so they were able to win that Super Bowl. And then it failed spectacularly. So was it, was it a good decision to get AB or was it just kind of luck that they were able to kind of hold it down for just two minutes with some duct tape and some super glue? 
because the thing in Tampa Bay fell apart and it fell apart fast. Very fast. But yeah, we have revisionist history. We just say Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay, won a Super Bowl. That's how good he is. Boom, bam, boom. And it's like, uh, there was some luck that went into that. Great and greatness. Like at most things, you need luck and greatness. I wouldn't say Aaron Rodgers has been on the receiving end of a lot of luck throughout his career. And Green Bay is a major part of that. Now he's in New York. Let's see what he can do. I'm excited. I think he's ready to make a full recovery. And I am th- and I do think that he's going to help set the culture with the New York Jets. Let them know what it actually takes to win. And quite frankly, if he goes to New York and legitimately wins, gets to an AFC championship game, gets him into the playoffs, to me, that'll probably be a bigger accomplishment than most of what he did in Green Bay. And it'll be a bigger accomplishment than what Tom Brady was able to do because Tom Brady went to a pretty legit situation at that point. But Tom Brady also does deserve credit for, you know, for being able to get Gronk and and to be able to get AB like that. You know, he definitely does deserve that as well. So um, I, I just think some of these comparisons just don't always end up fair. Um, and again, we're using the GOAT as the gold standard. And it's like, that's a tough one to me. You can't always compare someone to the literal GOAT. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think it was a big mistake? for Aaron Rodgers to leave Green Bay for New York? Um, or do you think it's going to end up being successful? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.